Property Show, we bring you what's buzzing in Bengaluru's housing market. Where are the homes selling the fastest and what are the upcoming investment hotspots? With Pavitra Shankar, ED Brigade Group, Mani Rangarajan, COO Housing.com and Gaurav Kumar, MD Residential Capital Services, CBRE. Also, in news you can use, Maharera has slapped a fine on a developer selling non-agricultural land as a plotted development. Should you buy into a plotted development only if it's RERA registered? Sudeep Malik, partner at Khetan & Co. will tell us what the RERA law says. Let's begin with Bengaluru first. Uh, Pavitra, many thanks for joining us today. And I'm going to start with the numbers which came out. Brigade Group ended the June quarter with a sales value of 470 crore rupees, which is, I think, a growth of over 100% by value compared to last year's same period. So enough reasons to make you happy and smile? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we uh, were expecting the quarter to be a little tough because of the local restrictions and lockdown because of the second wave. But uh, I think while a lot of people were, you know, affected um, on in their personal lives, etc., um, the hesitancy to actually go forward and make a residential purchase was uh, a lot less compared to last year. So actually, we were able to see a good number of uh, conversions there. And we've actually seen the market pick up substantially since then as well. So where we were at the end of Q2 last year, we're actually seeing that already happen in July and August. So we feel pretty confident that in the end, uh, that could have just been a blip. And we're very confident of the coming few quarters. So I'm looking at the sales velocity numbers, which is monthly sales velocity, Pavitra. And uh, this is housing.com data. 2015, Bengaluru was selling over 4,000 units per month on an average. And with, you know, all the ups and downs today, we are at or we've ended 2020 at about 1955 or let's just round it up to 2000 units a month. That's the run rate of Bengaluru market. Do you feel that with so many things aligned, which is low interest rates and, you know, prices haven't moved up so much, there is a possibility that you could reach that number or those are heydays. Let's not benchmark ourselves to that number. I think this year will be better than the last. Uh, a lot of what we know and expect uh, from the COVID um, you know, pandemic has really sort of uh, shown itself over the last year. So I think with the vaccinations happening, with people you know, starting to come back to work uh, and generally sort of understanding how to mitigate the spread of uh, COVID or how to just make it a little easier on themselves, I think this uh, coming year should, should be pretty good compared to last year. And uh, we're actually seeing that on the ground in terms of uh, higher site visits, uh, the interest of people to buy. I feel the conditions that you mentioned uh, earlier about higher affordability and, and lower home uh, interest rates all sort of have helped so many of the people who are sitting on the fence and maybe not necessarily wanting to take a call. Um, sitting at home for so long has just sort of increased their perceived value of having a home. So they have actually started to make those decisions now. And, uh, you know, starting in 2000, actually in 2020, when uh, during the lockdown and after that, a lot of developers were giving incentives and schemes to sort of help people take the decision and make the plunge. That has sort of catalyzed a big movement towards um, uh, a better absorption on the residential. Okay. But, but you still, I think it's a difficult one to say whether you will reach 4,000 uh, run rate of 4,000 units sold every month or not. So, Mani, the data is from housing.com. What, what do you predict? I mean, uh, looking at the fact that actually on pricing, if I see that prices have gone up from 4,600 in 2015, which is per square foot, uh, to about 5,400, this is probably better than what I've seen in terms of price movement in either MMR or definitely NCR market. Do you believe that the, the actual monthly sales numbers will go back to their heydays in the next, let's say, 12 to 24 months? Is that, is that a possibility? Uh, I wouldn't say that we'll probably go back to their heydays in the next 12 to 24 months. It may take slightly longer than that. Uh, but the fact is that uh, when you look at uh, the first quarter of this year, uh, the monthly run rate was uh, close to about 2,700 units. Uh, and as uh, Pavitra said, uh, we feel that uh, the rest of 2021 will be far better uh, yep. than what we saw in 2020. Mm -hmm. One of the very interesting things about Bangalore is that uh, during the second phase of the lockdown, uh, online demand did not slow down right, mm -hmm. during April to June. Uh, 
uh, transactions did slow down uh, for uh, the reasons that uh, you know most of the weekends uh, during April to June were like locked down, and uh, about 80% of home buying uh, tends to happen during the weekends. But we have seen a very very strong recovery uh, in the month of July. In fact, uh, if I look at sales uh, done by Prop Tiger in, in July. Uh, and compare it on a year-over-year -year basis. It's uh, it it grow, It's the growth rate is north of about uh, 50%. All right. Uh, and on the pricing front, uh, Manisha, we have seen uh, that developers have gradually reduced the discounts. So, so in fact, we started seeing that behavior right from uh, the month of February and March, uh, when the discounts uh, gradually started coming down. Uh, and uh, in uh, the thing in Bangalore is that when you look at the inventory overhang of about 70,000 units, uh, only about 20% is uh, ready to move, uh, compared to about 25%, which we saw last year. So uh, there's not too much of ready to move inventory. We are talking about 14,000 to 15,000 units, mostly uh, located in the south and uh, the east parts of Bangalore. Uh, there's some amount of uh, ready-to-move inventory which is unsold in the northern part of Bangalore. Uh, and considering all this and also considering the fact that there are a number of uh, branded players in Bangalore, uh, you know, we are likely to see uh, prices firm up and we are unlikely to see any price correction downwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got uh, pretty well summed up between the two participants. But let me ask you one thing. You know, we constantly talk about the health of the real estate market and the CBRE residential report actually delves deeper into it. Would you agree with me that Bengaluru has always been one of the healthier residential markets in India with probably the lowest delayed apartments and also in terms of the developer's capability to deliver um, and, and, their, and their financing and funding in place? I think Bangalore has been blessed on many counts and not just the weather. You know, it is the darling of uh, private equity funds, lenders, because the fundamentals of the market has always been so strong. So even while there were some other cities during our uh, heydays of the residential boom, uh, prices went up significantly. Bangalore's always been very stable as far as price appreciation is concerned. The other thing to note about Bangalore is that the buying audience which is primarily a tech buying audience, has not been affected by COVID, Manisha. You know, so COVID's taken away a lot of uh, shine from travel and hospitality and maybe in some cases financial services. But the tech sector continues to be very, very strong. And these are your buyers who are either looking for larger homes or they're looking to be first-time buyers. And, you know, if you're a first-time buyer, whether you're in Bangalore or anywhere else in India, today you're faced a situation where replacement cost of homes is actually more than what developers are selling homes for you know so land prices have only gone up construction costs have only gone up but home prices have actually collected over the last four or five years and that makes it such a great investment haven for not just uh, retail buyers or h and but also institutional investors and lenders i mean they love the city uh, tech absorption has been great for the first two quarters as compared to the rest of the country uh, while there are some churns that are happening from a leasing perspective, but, you know, overall the market's growing. And as long as the market's growing, your buyer base is always going to be very, very strong. So we feel very, very good. Like you said, it's a, you know, at the start of the discussion, it's a happy discussion because Bangalore is doing so well across all sectors, not just residential, but office and retail. Great market to be in if you're a developer. Yes, uh, development right. firms do complain that price appreciation is not as healthy as a maybe a Bombay or some other markets, but that's the reason why demand is so robust. I think you've summed it up, but I'm going to now look at some of the markets which are doing well. Now that we've spoken about the fact that Bengaluru is one of the healthiest markets. So from the list that I've got from housing.com, under 50 lakhs, let's see which are the markets which have done very well. Bagalur, Devanahalli, Electronic City Phase 2, Kogilu, Bellari Road and Varathur Road. I believe you have two projects there, uh, Pavitra, which which are which are in the top uh, top three projects sold list. Yeah, we do. Uh, we have our Brigade Utopia, which is in Barthur Road. We have Brigade El Dorado, which is in Bagalur Road, and we have Brigade Orchards, which is in Devnahalli. And all these basically have inventory in that sweet spot of 50 lakhs uh, to 1 crore even. Barthur can be a higher priced market because it uh, basically has the catchment area of all the IT professionals. Whereas the other two are still growing markets, but are still growing very strongly. 
So all of those products, they're all in all in uh, mixed use townships, which we as Brigade feel uh, presents a very good uh, you know value proposition to the customer. So these are great markets for Bangalore. Some are more established and some are growing. There's another segment which seems to be doing extremely well, that big demand for three-bedroom house. So for a change, rather than doing a price breakup, we actually, uh, uh, through this matrix at housing.com, can you give us the top uh, five selling markets in the three-bedroom segment? And of course, they came back saying they would be priced between 75 lakhs to two crores. So these are the micro markets, Whitefield, Begur, Varathu Road, Old Madras Road, which is uh, Krishna Rajpuram, and Kanamangala. Take it from here. Do you believe that going forward, whether it's under 50 lakh or it's the three bedroom markets that we've spoken about, these will continue to do well or there are other hotspots that we should look at? See, when you, uh, when you read about the projects uh, priced below 50 lakhs, right, a lot of them are located in North Bangalore, right? Uh, and uh, honestly, I, I, I thought uh, a couple of years ago that North Bangalore would do much, much better. Uh, the, while you still have a reasonable amount of supply out there, uh, we find that the absorption in North Bangalore is not good as, let's say, the east or the south part of Bangalore. Uh, and that's primarily, I think, because infrastructure has really not kept pace with uh, the residential development out there. Uh, so, for example, uh, housing, we came out with a healthcare report. And in Bangalore, if you look at the healthcare facilities, a lot of it is uh, centered around central Bangalore and towards the east part of Bangalore. And uh, some of them are sprinkled down south, but uh, not too much up north. So from a lifestyle perspective, I think uh, North Bangalore has not done well in terms of absorption in the recent past. Uh, and North Bangalore is uh, also now emerging as like a hot spot in terms of plots. So uh, when you look at Devanahalli or when you go past the airport, right, a lot of plot options for, uh, uh, for investors to choose from. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, where uh, the actual market is, uh, is doing well, right, you're finding that the market on the eastern side, when you look at the Whitefield area, uh, it's doing well. And I think uh, this year, uh, Sarjapur is going to do very well. There, there are quite a few launches which are slated uh, out there in Sarjapur. Uh, and Sarjapur and uh, Kanakpura Road are, are two areas where I think uh, you know, the market will, will do very well. Uh, on the western side of, uh, of Bangalore, uh, Manisha, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's not always been a very hot market. It's been about... Uh, eight to 10% uh, of uh, Bangalore's uh, total sales. Uh, there we have areas like Kingeri, uh, which is an industrial area, which is more like affordable housing, uh, which has done well. Uh, there's also a project which was launched by a prominent developer in, uh, in uh, called Jindal City, uh, which has uh, uh, done well. Uh, but that was largely because you know it had metro connectivity from General City down to Yashwantpur and then from Yashwantpur towards the rest of Bangalore. So if I were to lay my bets on uh, Bangalore for this year, I would uh, really look very, very hard at Sajapur Road and south of Bangalore. Gaurav, where would you lay your bets? There's also oh, the yeah. Bangalore-Mysore uh, highway or expressway that everybody is talking about. Sure. So, you know, our data shows us a slightly different view from what uh, Mani expressed. Um, North Bangalore, as we see the data, especially Thani Sandra Road, Henur Road, uh, Hebal and beyond, uh, for the mid-market space, especially Thani Sandra Road has done very, very well. Um, in fact, there's been a slight price appreciation as well. And uh, from an infrastructure perspective, phase three of the metro is going to hit very close. Uh, there's been almost about a hundred crore investment from the local government to upgrade and widen Thani Sandra Road. And that entire micro market will now see a few malls and a few hotels coming up. Um, and the problem with, uh, you know, uh, Strajarpur Road, Outer Ring Road, Whitefield is that while they're very, very well established micro markets, to find affordable supply is becoming more and more difficult. So while a lot of our clients want to go there, but as they start seeing options, there's been a great appreciation in prices in many of those projects. So if you are looking for value, um, if you're looking for proximity to the airport, um, you know, as we see RFPs by large multinational corporates, they are now more and more saying we want to be in North Bangalore, we want to be closer to the airport, 
uh, they feel that um, you know the eastern side of Bangalore, while it's a well-established community, uh, you know, in a post-COVID environment, is likely to see some traffic. So, from our perspective, what we are seeing traction in the mid-market space uh, in plots. Uh, the quality of developers who are bringing in supply is very, very good in North Bangalore. So, you know, my bet would be for North Bangalore. Uh, Pavita, would you like to choose between the two? Just very quickly, we have about 30 seconds. <laughs> You've raised a QIP of about 450 crores or more, uh, in fact, 500 crores and uh, to buy land. So, where would you put your money? North and East Bangalore. Um, <laughs> and as the opportunity arises, maybe in the South as well. So I agree with, uh, you know, I, it really depends on the different sub-markets. Um, and, you know, it, the, the idea is to have a well-diversified portfolio even in Bangalore because sometimes we don't know what are the kinds of sudden uh, changes that happen and that we have uh, suddenly seen a lot of movement towards North Bangalore, which previously was not happening. So I think it's important to actually have product across the city and that's the beauty of our Bangalore, it can grow in all different directions. You know, just one more point, Manisha, while, you know, Pavitra, I know, is a master of integrated communities and townships, the one highlight that we are seeing, the outlier trend in Bangalore and every other city is the walk-to-work concept. Mm -hmm. So we will see integrated townships, integrated communities do very well, you know, whether you're in north or east. And if you can have that ability to walk to work, shop and live where you are, I think it's going to be fantastic. And, and, and I think that will save you from the Bangalore traffic, which is notorious to say <laughs> the least. <laughs> Pavitra Mani and Gaurav, thank you very much. It's been an interesting discussion. But I mean, you know, uh, it is like you rightly said, a market which is much in demand because the IT sector continues to boom and do very well. Thanks again for being part of this discussion. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.